Assalamualaikum. Today we're moving on to the lower limb. The first specimen we're looking at is the foot. Now, with this in front of you, as before, first we'll determine the side. Now, just by seeing in front, some students will be able to appreciate that this is the right foot just by looking at the toe's position. However, another easier way is to see from the top side. Over here you can see two hollow bones over here, a larger one and a smaller one. The one which is located more medially is the tibia and the one laterally is the fibula. The fibula will always be lateral to the tibia. Just by seeing these two in its position, I know now that this is the medial side. Hence, this would be the medial malleolus or the medial ankle and this side the lateral malleolus is formed by the distal end of the fibula is located right over here. So this is our right foot. This is the anterior surface. There are a whole lot of things to pinpoint over here. Over here you can appreciate an extensor retinaculum. It's a bit of a Y shape. And let's pass a pin underneath this retinaculum. You can see a lot of tendons going underneath as well as a couple of vessels too. Here you can see that I'm passing a needle right underneath this retinaculum. This is the retinaculum and the tendons you can see here are number one, the extensor digitorum. Look how it has multiple digits. This is the extensor digitorum and if I were to go more medially, this one right over here going to the big toe, that is the extensor Halusis. Here is the tendon starting on this point. You can see how it's passing underneath the retinaculum and you can see how it goes all the way to the toe. Look how I'm passing a needle underneath that same tendon. The extensor halusis longus and extensor digitorum. Aside from this, underneath the extensor digitorum you can see a muscle with similar branching tendons. This is the extensor digitorum brevis. If this was the longest over here, the one below is the brevis. And let's put a short stubby uh, pin to denote that. So we have three muscles located over here. Underneath this retinaculum, aside from the tendons, if I were to just avert these tendons here, you can see a reddish structure here. This actually is the descending branch of the anterior tibial artery. You can see the lumen right over here. It's a small lumen. And at this point, as it descends down below here, it will form the dorsal pedal artery. It's also a site where we palpate this artery to see if the pulsations are coming. And here I passed a needle through the anterior tibial artery. Moving on to the lateral aspect, I'm going to turn it slightly like so. You can see how the extensor retinaculum extends all the way to the lateral side as well. At this point, this becomes your fibular retinaculum. And uh, you can also call it the peroneal retinaculum. The bone itself is known as the fibula. But the muscles, either you can refer to them as the fibularis longus and brevis or the peroneus longus and brevis. This one over here with the muscle shown is the brevis. And this one, this tendon is the longus. So you have a peroneus brevis and a peroneus longus both descending behind the lateral malleolus and passing underneath the retinaculum. Obviously they will go to their respective structures down below. And there's not much else to show on this side. However, if I were to turn to the medial side, we have a number of things to see here. Now here is the bony prominence, the medial malleolus. You can see a number of tendons passing underneath this medial malleolus and uh, the easiest way to identify them although there's a certain rule that if you were to look on the back side normally with the leg in the same place flexor hallucis would be the lateral most tibialis posterior would be in the middle and the flexor tutorum would be the medial most but since we cannot see the leg we'll have to follow the tendons and so if i were to follow this tendon notice how it is going near the base, the sole of the foot. Here we have the tibialis 
posterior and I will pass a needle right through this one. And here we go, tibialis posterior has been marked. Now notice this one right here and observe as I pull on this tendon, notice how there is a multiple branching tendon over here. That is the flexor digitorum, just like we had the extensor digitorum on the front, on the dorsal surface, on the plantar surface, we call it plantar at this point, we have this flexor digitorum longus. So I'm passing another needle here. This is the flexor digitorum. The flexor hallucis, uh, I think the tendon has been ruptured, but the easiest way to identify it is just to follow the tendon reaching the big toe. This is the flexor hallucis longus. Anything which is the toe would be hallucis related. Just like anything reaching the thumb would be pollicis related, the toe we refer to as the hallucis. Similarly, there's a difference in the naming scheme. Here we call them the metacarpals, over here we'll be calling them the metatarsals. We'll get to that in a moment. So we have three tendons over here, the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis. And the retinaculum over here, that's a bit disrupted, but it was known as the flexor retinaculum. If I were to remove all of these tendons, you can see a host of other structures passing over here. Now these two, well, this bundle over here, if I were to show you their lumen side, you can see that one is a larger lumen and the other is a much smaller lumen. In fact, here's another one. These are your tibial vessels. The larger one, let's use a blue to denote that. Here I have the blue pin. And I'm passing this needle right underneath the larger one. It's a bit wet here. Here we go. Here is the tibial vein. And the tibial artery, the one which is more thicker, I'm passing a needle over there, and this is the tibial artery. You see both of these, the artery and the vein. The nerve, tibial nerve also passes through here, and if I were to show that, it would be this one right over here. This one's a tendon, this is probably the flexor hallucis tendon that was distorted here. As I dig deeper, here we go. You can see that I have now isolated the posterior tibial nerve. This is the uh, it's a tibial nerve and this will then divide into the medial and the plantar nerve on this side. So let's pass this thing over here. We have the tibial nerve marked. As we come to the sole of the foot, now here it gets really really confusing. But once again, you just need to remember the landmarks and locations. Um, keep in mind that the sole of the foot is covered with a plantar epineurosis that has been removed. In fact, the a lot of the structures, the primary layers have been removed. The layers you're seeing now here, the one with the multiple digits and the, the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis the longus. This is actually seen in the second layer. And on the back side, this thing you, what you see here, that is the quadratus planti. Remember, quadratus planti will insert into the tendons which are going upward as the flexor digitorum. Within all of this mess, well, it's not proper to call it a mess, here I have basically picked up the branches of the tibial nerve. At this point, because it's going to the toe and the second and the third digit, this is the medial plantar nerve. The lateral plantar nerve will then is divided and goes to the other side right over here. Here we have another part of the nerve. The nerve has been split and right over here. It's difficult to pick out. It's pretty deep over here and it's right passing over here. This is the lateral plantar nerve. So these two nerves are divisions of this same tibial nerve. Aside from that we can see at this point the abductor hallucis and below that the flexor hallucis. Just like in the Thanar eminence we had an abductor pollicis and a flexor pollicis. So similarly we have an abductor which is the one which is most medially and then finally we have the flexor. Similarly over this side the outermost would be the abductor digiti minimi 
and the one on the inside, deeper, would be the flexor digiti minimi. Just like we had lumbricals in the hand, we'll also have lumbricals deep down over here. It won't be easy to see them without removing all of these. Here, once again, you can see all the tendons passing through of the flexor digitorum. And in between them, here, let's pass a needle right over here. Here you can appreciate one lumbrical right over here. Look how I'm pulling it out. This is a lumbrical. And if we go even further, then we will see the introsci. And with that, this is the spotting done on a specimen of the foot. Hopefully that helped you. And until next time, we'll be looking at other parts of the lower limb. Thank you much for joining us. Salaam.